And I might even be biscuits if they're lucky. <laughs> So, Chris, what is about an organ project? Yes, uh, in 2022, the Natural History Society of Northumbria are going to run a major citizen science project on orchids. Had a big success with bees and ladybirds this year, so next year we thought it'd have to be botany, and we're concentrating on orchids. And in fact, the project is called Discovering Orchids. It's a bit melodramatic, isn't it? Well, you want to get people interested. Don't people like orchids, the lovely ones you get from the forests? Ah, but they're not native. They're grown in greenhouses or in garden centres. We should be concentrating on our native orchids, which although they're not as showy as the ones you buy in supermarkets, are nonetheless absolutely fascinating uh, once you can get down to the detail. They're still beautiful, right? In their own right, yes, but some are quite small, some are really tiny, and you have to get down on your hands and knees and use your hand lens to fully appreciate them. So Chris, how many orchids do we have in Northumbria then? Well, about 22. What do you mean about? Well, orchids are a bit unreliable. You see, they have, um, they have tubers underground, swollen roots which store nutrients, um, but they also have um, fungal threads that go through the soil and absorb nutrients and pass those back to the to roots. And if they're having a good year and there are lots of nutrients, then they will put up some leaves. And if they're having a really good year uh, and there's bags of nutrients, then they'll flower. But if it's not a good year, nutrients are a bit scarce, fungal threads are not working properly, then they'll just sit there and wait and wait until the time is right. So some years there will be lots, some years there will be none at all. So how many individuals have we got in Northumbria? Don't know. Don't the botanical records tell you? Well, not exactly. Not exactly? Exactly. Not exactly. What do you mean by that? Well, often the records we have only show us that the plant is within, say, a two by two kilometre square, so four square kilometres. And if they're old records, very often we only have it down to ten kilometre by ten kilometres, so very inaccurate indeed. So it could be anywhere in four square kilometres, or even a hundred? Yeah, and the records rarely give a quantity, so it could be one plant or it could be thousands. That's not much help. How can you tell if the population is doing well or declining? Basically, you can't. The records are just not precise enough. This is pretty pathetic. They might be dying off around us, and until the last one dies out, we, w we don't know. What can we do about it? Ah, well, that's the aim of this orchid project. We're asking people to go out, look for orchids, record the eight-figure grid reference where they find them, and provide an estimate of roughly how many there are. An eight-figure grid reference? Well, it tells you the position of the plant to within 10 metres. Now, I mean, you could use a, a, a GPS system if you've got one. Most people don't have GPS, but um, you can get a free app on your mobile phone, which will give you the a grid reference to that accuracy, or you could do what three words, another free app, and we're encouraging people to use iRecord, uh, and that's a fantastic system, which again is free, uh, and will provide the grid reference automatically, and also allows you to add photographs. Um, so it's a really, really good system. We're encouraging people to use that. So what you're asking is for any any interested member of the public to send records at their NHS app. Absolutely. Uh, iRecord sends the records to us automatically and then we can respond within a few days to tell the person, the recorder, that they've got it right or asking them for other information. But you can go on the website, all those other ways are described there. You could just send us a spreadsheet or even just, just a straightforward email will do. So how will people recognise an orchid? There will be pictures and videos online. Um, as I said, you can send a, a photograph. Uh, we have a team of verifiers who will be able to look at your photographs and say, yes, that's, uh, that's uh, an accurate determination. And we shall also be producing a pamphlet, which you can look at, which will have pictures of the orchids and descriptions of them as well. So if there's any orchid? 
Well, we do have detailed coordinates for most of the rare and scarce species in our area, so we're asking people to concentrate on the more widespread plants that people are more likely to find. But, of course, if you see one of the rarer ones, do take a note, note the grid reference, because it's always possible that you've found a new location for what is a rare plant, or you might even have found uh, an orchid which has not been recorded in our area before. I mean, that would be a real feather in your cap. So which ones in particular are you concentrating on? Ah, well, um, we've chosen seven. And um, the first one, the flower in the year, is the early purple orchid. And uh, so that flowers in May. Uh, it's uh, quite a bonny plant. It's maybe a foot high. In our area, it's, uh, it's not uncommon. Immediately after that um, is the northern marsh orchid uh, in terms of time. And as you can see, that's a very dark purple color. The lip, the lower lip, has um, stripes and spots on it. Um, and the leaves are spotted too, rather like the um, common spotted orchid, which is our next uh, orchid that flowers. Uh, and that's um, a, a lighter colour, usually light lilac, sometimes almost white, with much narrower spotted leaves. And then uh, the heath spotted orchid, which, uh, as its name implies, grows on the, in heathy areas, often in damp marshy spots. And that is, a, a, again, a light lilac colour with quite wide spotted uh, lower lip. Quite a, a, a pretty plant, quite dainty. Um, pyramidal orchid is, is uh, another one which we want you to look out for, and that is a, a dark cerise colour. Uh, cerise pink really stands out against the grass, and as the name implies, it's often got a, a rather pyramidal shape. And then one that you might not have seen before, which is the uh, broad leaved Helleborina. Now, that grows in woodlands, and so it often gets missed, it's often in the shade, you may have to search for it a bit, but it's actually quite a common orchid, and it's the last one of the series to flower. Normally it flowers in perhaps late August or maybe early September. And then we've asked also for you to look for one of our rarer orchids, number seven, and we've chosen that uh, as the bee orchid. And that's because the, the bee orchid is on the march. It's climate change, we think, and it's been expanding its range northwards. It got into, as far as North Northumberland, about 2004, 2005. Now it's got into Lowland Scotland. It's expanding in Northumberland and Durham, and we'd really like to know how far it's moving and where it's expanding to. So we've added, as number seven, the bee orchid. Um, so what will happen to all these new records? Well, initially they will go on to uh, the local record centre, in our case, Eric, and from there to a national database, which will allow scientists anywhere, anywhere in the world to use them as part of their studies. And the Natural History Society will be producing a book, Orchids of the Northeast, or a similar title, which will contain maps and all the data and allow um, analysis to take place, and also will provide a picture uh, of the way orchids are behaving now and allow comparisons in the future. So you want people to go on walks in the area and note down where they see which orchids and how many? Yep. Well that sounds easy enough. Is that all? Yes, well we should be running a lot of site visits so that people can go and see the rarer orchids because we know they'll want to, to see them uh, and many of the sites in which they grow are, are fragile and so we need to take great care. Uh, also, we should be running workshops, um, hopefully with visiting experts, looking at some of the more complicated identification features, maybe at hybrid orchids and so forth, and we should be running some trips which will allow for wheelchair access. So how would we get involved in the project? Well, there will be information on the Natural History Society website, uh, dates and details, help with identification, uh, and there will also be details on how to take uh, photographs of orchids uh, to, to help with that identification. And what happens if you're not a member of the NHSM? doesn't matter. We'd like everybody to be involved, even if they're not members. All the workshops, all the trips will be open to members and non-members. We want to encourage as many people as possible to take part. That sounds great. Can I have a little biscuit now? You're free. <laughs>